ஹலோ ஆல் குட் மார்னிங் லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் ஸோ மை செல்ஃப் சாய் குமார் ஸோ லைக் ஐ வில் பி ட்ரைனிங் யூ ஆன் தி ஸ்கில்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ரிக்வயர்ட் ஃபார் செல் ஃபோர்ஸ் டெவ் ஆப்ஷன் ஸோ லைக் ஐ ஹவ் அரௌண்ட் லைக் சிக்ஸ் பிளேஸ் இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ஆன் தி செல் ஃபோர்ஸ் பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் ஸோ லைக் ஐ ஹவ் ஒர்க் போத் தஸ் அ டெவலப்பர் அஸ் வெல் அஸ் தி டெவ் ஆப்ஸ் இன்ஜினியர் ஸோ வாட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டூ டூ டேஸ் லைக் ஐ வில் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் யூ தி ஸ்கில்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ரிக்வயர்ட் ஃபார் திஸ் செல் ஃபோர்ஸ் டெவ் ஆப்ஸ் இன்ஜினியர் and uh, like uh, i will tell you a few about that it's like uh, what is mean by devops and uh, what is the purpose of devops uh, those kind of things so let me uh, share you something okay so let me start with this uh, course uh, content so if you look at the skills that are required for uh, this particular role so the skills that are required for this particular role are like a basic understanding on the salesforce platform so like uh, if you have a basic knowledge on uh, salesforce platform like uh, what are uh, environments in uh, salesforce like how we can create uh, environments in uh, salesforce and apart from that like uh, when it comes to the knowledge on the platform so what happens is like uh, so there is a tool called as uh, copado so like copado is one of the uh, devops tool uh, like uh, for salesforce platform so this particular copado tool is completely built on uh, salesforce platform so it is built on salesforce platform now like if you get an opportunity to work on this particular tool called as copado so then you should have salesforce administration knowledge as well because as it is completely built on uh, salesforce platform so like uh, what happens is like in order to implement the requirements so that meets your uh, projects like you might need to do some other configuration changes so for it definitely like uh, you require uh, salesforce administration knowledge so apart from that like uh, apart from salesforce administrative knowledge or uh, the basics of salesforce platform so what else uh, you require for this particular course is like uh, you require knowledge on git like uh, what is mean by a version control system and uh, what are all the features of a uh, version control system so like you should be aware of a uh, few uh, like uh, some of the most commonly used uh, git commands uh, uh, apart from knowing the features of uh, git and next is like uh, you should be aware of a uh, couple of build tools so on salesforce platform we like uh, there are uh, like few build tools so out of those few like uh, we will see two of the most commonly used uh, build tools so one is uh, sfdx and the other one is and migration tool and uh, apart from the knowledge on these build two tools so what is you require is like you require knowledge on uh, shell and so and one more thing is like you will require knowledge on yaml so when it comes to the knowledge on shell and yaml so like even without having the knowledge on shell and yaml uh, you can uh, survive in this role uh, in the initial days but uh, once you gain experience and uh, if you want to grow in this uh, particular role you will definitely require the knowledge on uh, shell and yaml and apart from that like uh, you should be aware of uh, how we can set up this process using uh, the uh, ci servers so when it comes to the ci servers like we have uh, many uh, many ci ser- servers available in the market so like uh, if you take the uh, github and uh, as an example so we have something called as uh, github actions so it is the ci cd uh, feature available in uh, github and when it comes to bitbucket so we have something called as uh, bitbucket pipeline bitbucket pipelines and apart from that uh, apart from these two we have many so like we have many ci servers available in the market we have jenkins we have uh, travis ci circle ci so we have so so many ci servers so now the thing here is like uh, if you if you get an understanding on how we can implement the things using uh, at least one of these like uh, like in order like uh, instead of saying one i can say like uh, if you get an understanding on how we can implement things uh, using uh, 
like a two or three of these, what happens is like you will be definitely in a position to implement the things using the other CI servers as well. So what we are going to do in this particular course is like we are going to cover how we can uh, set up uh, the things using uh, Bitbucket pipelines as well as GitHub actions. So with this knowledge, what happens is like you will be definitely in a position to set up the process using the other other CI servers as well. So while setting up the process using uh, these CI servers, like uh, like any of these things which are listed here, you will require knowledge on shell and YAML. So apart from shell and YAML, so like uh, you might uh, also like uh, it will be better like if you have uh, knowledge on uh, some other scripting knowledge as well, but that is not required. So when it comes to implementing the process using uh, these CI servers, like it depends on the project requirements and it depends uh, completely on uh, our requirement. So like uh, we will based on uh, the requirements, like we will uh, uh, choose the scripting law scripting language accord accordingly. But major for majority of the uh, Salesforce projects, like uh, knowing shell and YAML is uh, sufficient and uh, even without uh, having much knowledge on uh, shell and ML in the initial days, you can survive on this particular role. And after this, and uh, when it comes to the Salesforce platform, what happens is like uh, there are something called as uh, ISV tools. So when it comes to ISV tools, so we have uh, many available in the market. So some of the most commonly used uh, ISV tools uh, on Salesforce platform are Copado, Gearset, and we have something called as uh, Flowsum. And we have something called as Auto Rabbit. And similarly, like this, like there are uh, so many ISV tools as well. So like what is mean by a ISV tool is nothing but uh, like we can ISV stands for uh, independent uh, software vendor. So what happens with these ISV tools is like uh, these are like uh, built in such a way that everything like uh, every uh, active like uh, every devops activity can be achieved just by point and clicking so like uh, without having knowledge on uh, git shell and yaml so we can set up the devops process uh, using these uh, isv tools like we you should require uh, basic knowledge on git but uh, definitely like when you get a chance to work on these tools what happens is like uh, you are not required to have uh, any knowledge on shell and yaml so that is the uh, that is one of the advantage of uh, these tools and uh, the other advantage is like uh, like uh, what happens is like uh, when you uh, get a chance to like when you make use of these tools what happens is like uh, they will uh, like uh, what happens is like they have a few advantages there are few advantages uh, with these tools when we compare with these uh, ci servers and apart from having the advantages like they will also have a uh, few dis disadvantages like the major disadvantage would be the cost so like uh, like they will charge uh, some amount of fee for uh, each user so that is one of the drawback of these tools and apart from this like uh, apart from uh, copado and uh, these uh, isv tools so if you have knowledge on these tools so then uh, like uh, the things which i have listed here so that is uh, sufficient so some knowledge on git as well after the having the knowledge on git so you should have an understanding on like what are all the build tools uh, and what we can uh, do with these build tools and uh, after that like if you have knowledge on shell yaml and how we can set up the process using uh, these ci servers so it is sufficient for this particular role and when it comes to administration so like uh, if you uh, before going to that uh, administration let me present you a different skin so this is the uh, course content uh, that we will be uh, covering in this particular course so like if you look at uh, this particular course so like uh, here i have listed uh, salesforce administration so the reason like you might get a doubt like uh, why we need to learn uh, salesforce administration for this particular role so the reason for that is like uh, there are two things so one is that uh, particular uh, Popado tool. So as it is particularly uh, like completely built on Salesforce platform. So while working with that tool, definitely like you should have knowledge on Salesforce administration. And apart from that, so one more thing is like uh, the reason for including Salesforce uh, administrative concepts in this particular course is. So the other reason is 
like as a devops engineer so as a salesforce devops engineer like uh, your uh, primary role will be migrating the application code from one environment to another environment so one environment to another environment now in this process what happens is like while migrating the code from one environment to another environment you will encounter few kind of uh, issues so in order to troubleshoot those issues so like uh, in order to troubleshoot those issues and uh, apart from troubleshooting the issues so one is troubleshooting the issues and the other one is and apart from this so when it comes to migrating uh, the application code from one environment to another environment so there will be uh, like a few types of things which we can't uh, migrate uh, what happens is like uh, we will do those things uh, manually these things are called as uh, manual uh, steps so the things whichever can't be migrated what happens with them is like we will do those things manually so in order to do this uh, manual uh, manual step so what happens is like uh, you will so you will require uh, some knowledge on salesforce administration because without having that knowledge what happens is like you won't be able to troubleshoot the issues by yourself and you won't be able to complete the manual steps by yourself and one more thing is like there is something called as uh, data loading as well so when it comes for this particular role what happens is like uh, you will be required to do data loads as well as part of a uh, few projects so it depends like in few projects like you might be required to uh, load uh, the data as well so like in those kind of projects what happens is like you should uh, definitely have knowledge on data loading as well so in order to so in order to uh, do handle these uh, activities what happens is like you should have uh, knowledge on salesforce administration so that is the reason uh, for which uh, we have included salesforce administration in this uh, particular course so what we are going to do in uh, salesforce administration is like uh, we are going to build a sample application so like uh, instead of uh, just learning the things uh, orally so what we are going to do is like we are going to build a sample application and uh, in the process of building that application we are going to learn a uh, few of the administrative concepts and when it comes to the salesforce administration like i am not going to cover uh, 100% uh, administration but i am going to cover some 50 to 60% of the administrative concepts which gives you an idea or confidence uh, uh, like you will get an uh, idea on how we can uh, uh, things uh, like how we can set up things on uh, salesforce platform so that is the reason uh, why for which uh, we have included this uh, administrative concept like if you have like if you have this salesforce administrative knowledge and uh, if you don't require uh, like uh, any background on salesforce administration so then in that case what you can do is like uh, for this uh, institute management people so whenever uh, they reach us out to you, you can tell that uh, we already have knowledge on Salesforce administration and uh, we uh, we are looking uh, exclus exclusively for uh, DevOps training. So what happens is like uh, based on the number of uh, account uh, we get, so we will plan the course accordingly. So like uh, we will either uh, directly start with uh, DevOps or uh, we will uh, start with uh, administrative concepts based on the uh, number of uh, account whichever we get. So what happens with these uh, administrative sessions is like uh, we are going to cover uh, like we will be having these administrative sessions uh, uh, for six to eight hours like you can consider like uh, it will be between uh, six to eight days because uh, daily like we will be having one hour session uh, for each day so like we will have these administrative sessions for some six to eight days and after that we will start off with the devops concepts so okay so if you uh, look at the uh, devops concepts uh, which i have listed here so like we will start off with this uh, with this build tool called as sfdx and uh, before sfdx like there is one more thing called as uh, workbench like which will be useful for you in uh, troubleshooting few kind of issues like we will first basically start with this workbench because like uh, this is a ui based uh, web tool uh, and uh, even by using this we can uh, migrate the code from one environment to another environment so we will start uh, with workbench and uh, we will cover sfdx after that we will see a uh, git like uh, in git like we will see the uh, like what is the purpose of git and what are all the 
futures of git and after that we will see something called as ant migration tool and post that we will see something called as uh, sandboxes so sandboxes is nothing but uh, these are the uh, environments in salesforce and after that we will be covering something called as chain sets and then uh, we will uh, cover copado and after copado so there is uh, like when it comes to copado there are two variants for it uh, one is copado and the other one is copado essentials uh, we will uh, see both of uh, those variants and uh, next we will see uh, shell and uh, yaml scripting basics and after that so we will see two real time uh, projects uh, the implementation of two real time projects one using uh, uh, github actions and the other one using uh, bitbucket pipelines and after that so like in the last year i have uh, specified like uh, otter rabbit but uh, we will uh, instead of otter rabbit what uh, we can do is like uh, we will uh, try to cover gear set so with this what happens is like you will have knowledge like after completing this course like uh, you choose to go for salesforce administration what happens is like you will have some understanding on salesforce administration and two of the leading uh, isv tools uh, in the market like uh, two of uh, like you will be having knowledge on uh, like two of these tools like uh, one will be definitely copado the other one would be either otter rabbit or gear set so you will be having knowledge on two of these uh, isv tools and you will be having knowledge on two ca servers as well like uh, bitbucket pipelines and uh, github actions so these are the skills which uh, you are going to uh, develop after completing this particular course now if you ask me like uh, what is uh, mean by devops and uh, what is the purpose of devops so in order to understand like what is mean by devops so you need to understand uh, how the application uh, development happens in uh, real time so when it comes to the application development in real time so what happens is like whenever any business reaches out to a software company so generally like what happens is like uh, people whoever runs a business so they will reach out to software company uh, in like a, like uh, in order to build an application to serve their uh, business needs so like whenever a company like whenever a business reaches out to a software company uh, like asking them to uh, build an application uh, in order to meet their business requirements what happens is like these software companies doesn't uh, uh, like uh, doesn't uh, start uh, working on building the application uh, immediately uh, whenever uh, these uh, business people reaches them so instead of that what happens is like these people will uh, follow a process so like in order to develop a application so like on any platform uh, on, on any platform what happens like there will be a process that will be followed so these things so these process which companies follow in order to build an application so this process will be called as software development life cycle so when it comes to software development life cycle so there will be di different uh, phases in it so the first phase will be planning phase and the next phase will be defining phase and next is designing phase next is building phase and uh, next is testing phase and the next phase would be deployment phase so these are the different phases of uh, software develop development life cycle so in the planning phase what happens in planning phase is like uh, generally like uh, people whoever uh, want uh, an application for their business what have what happens is like uh, they will uh, like they will think on all of the requirements that their application should have so like they will uh, imagine or think of uh, what are all the requirements uh, their application uh, like uh, what are all the features uh, their application should have in order to serve that uh, serve their uh, business uh, requirement so plan in planning phase that happens in uh, planning phase and in defining phase what happens is like all of the uh, features uh, features whichever that particular uh, business people have uh, thought of what happens is like uh, they will keep all of those uh, features uh, in a paper so it, keeping those things in a paper is nothing but they will document uh, all of those uh, things like uh, they will document all of those things so that is nothing but the defining phase so in the design phase what happens in the design phase is like uh, this this will be generally done by the uh, software architects or uh, the uh, lead uh, lead developers what happens in the design phase is like uh, based on the uh, based on the requirements of that particular uh, uh, business what happens is like uh, these people will decide the platform on which the application should be built 
and uh, they will also do something called as data modeling so that is uh, something technical so th like you can remember like so they will decide the choose the platform on which this particular application should be built and they will also uh, like what uh, they will uh, decide in this particular phase is like uh, they will uh, also break down all of these uh, requirements that are needed to build this particular application into few pieces and uh, the architects what what happens is like they will also uh, provide uh, like uh, provide you the implementation uh, implementation steps as well so these things so the the, uh, the things which are decided in the designing phase will pass down to the build team so when it comes to the role of devops engineer so we will be specifically involving in three these three phases of software uh, development life cycle like the build phase test phase and the deployment phase so we are not bothered about these three phases like the planning defining and designing phase because these will be handled by people with some other roles so we will be exclusively uh, working on these three phases like the build phase test phase and deployment phase so when it comes to build phase what happens is like uh, whatever are the uh, implementation steps that are pro provided by the architect in the design uh, design phase so like those implementation steps will be passed to the build uh, uh, like to the development team so when it comes to the development teams so they need to have an environment in order to uh, start uh, the development of that particular application so what ha happens uh, with the environments is like we will be we as a devops engineer are responsible for providing those environments so we will provide the environment uh, like we will set up that set up the environment and uh, we will provide access to the development team so what happens is like uh, once the development team gets access to that particular uh, environment so they will start working on building the application so that have in build phase what happens is like the uh, development of application happens so after the build build phase next thing is the testing phase so what happens is like uh, in testing phase whatever all whatever is the functionality that is built by the development team that uh, application functionality will be tested by a testing team so they will thoroughly test the uh, features or uh, features implemented by the development team so after the like in testing when it comes to testing so there will be two types of testing like one will be qa testing and the other one other one is uh, uat testing so qa testing is the testing done by the uh, internal qa people uh, internal uh, qa people of that particular project uat testing is nothing but uh, it will be done by the business so like the business people whoever uh, are actually building that particular application so you will see both these kind of testing so both of these happens so once we complete uat so what happens is like uh, we will uh, deploy the uh, changes to the production environment so production environment is nothing but it is the live environment where uh, the up actual live application runs so so these things uh, happen uh, in uh, these three phases now if you if you look at these three phases like one thing is like we need we uh, we will be responsible for uh, setting up the environments and uh, apart from that we will also be responsible for migrating the code from one environment to another environment so like uh, like how these things happen like how we will uh, migrate these uh, things and how we will uh, set up uh, these environments so these we, we will cover in a separate uh, session like in one of the session uh, in this particular course now if you ask me like, what is mean by devops like if you ask me like what is mean by devops so is is devops uh, a technology or is devops uh, a, a platform or uh, is devops uh, a separate uh, tool so like uh, in order to answer this particular question so devops is like it is not a tool or it is not a platform or it is not a technology so devops is nothing but so devops is a process which helps in uh, improving the efficiency of this particular software development life cycle so it is not a tool or it is not a platform or it is not a technology so but uh, it is a process where, like uh, which helps in improving the efficiency of this particular software de development life uh, life cycle so in order to understand this particular uh, term like uh, what is mean by uh, efficiency so uh, in order to under understand that uh, particular uh, term so let's 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 imagine so let's imagine uh, any uh, one uh, real time scenario so what happens with uh, any real time uh, uh, like uh, in any real time projects is like uh, people 
these software companies what uh, they will do is like the, they will uh, build an application and uh, the purpose of building this application is like they will build this particular application for a business so what happens with these businesses like uh, they, the the businesses will be having lot of uh, users uh, like a lot of uh, customers so instead of saying them as uh, users we can uh, tell them as customers so there will be lot of customers to these uh, businesses so these customers will uh, use that particular uh, application uh, in order to do uh, like in order to do some kind of uh, things so now what happens with this is like uh, the customers will be accessing the uh, business application so in order to so in order to uh, like uh, what we can say is like uh, in order to purchase the products of that particular business or uh, in order to uh, do some other uh, kind of activity so whichever uh, that business uh, serves now so applications uh, like uh, these customers will be using this particular application and uh, so what happens is like uh, generally when it comes to these applications like they will there will be two kind of applications so applications uh, for which so when it comes to these applications so you will uh, see the uh, two kind of applications in real time so what happens is like uh, a application will be built and uh, no modifications or uh, like uh, people won't do any kind of modifications on that particular application so once an application is built so like uh, let's assume like one scenario is like uh, they won't uh, do any upgrade upgrades for that particular application so this is one kind one kind of scenario and the other kind of scenario is uh, people will continuously upgrade the features of that particular application so the most of the application which we see in real time is like uh, will be these kind of applications where people business will be uh, continuously up upgrading the features of that particular application so the reason why people uh, will continuously upgrade uh, these uh, particular uh, applications is like in order to improve the business now when it comes to projects which uh, which will have like these continuous uh, upgrades what happens is like uh, the, for uh, these projects what happens is like uh, these uh, these uh, devops process uh, helps them a lot and we will, majority majority of the applications which we see in real time will be these kind of application the second category of applications so for companies whichever uh, have like uh, these kind of applications what happens is like they will be continuously developing uh, the features whichever are related to that uh, those new upgrades and uh, they will continuously like uh, they should continuously test these uh, the features and uh, after the complete uh, like after they completely test what happens is like they will release those features to the production environment now what happens is like uh, if uh, like uh, let's assume like uh, if for some reason so the uh, future or uh, the future or the upgrade which or was built by that uh, uh, which or was built by the development team so after pushing the changes to production if for some reason that uh, if that doesn't uh, work as expected what happens is like uh, the uh, the application stops working as expected and when the application stops working as expected what happens is like there will be a loss uh, that occurs to the business so in these like uh, for this particular kind of scenario so like if we have a devops process in place if we have a devops process in place what happens is like uh, it will be possible to recover it will be possible to recover quickly uh, from that uh, breakdown so suppose let's assume that so in this process we got uh, an issue like uh, while we deploy like uh, while we uh, pushed those uh, the changes which are related to those up upgrade into production so in case of an issue what happens is like if we have a, de a devops process in place it will be possible to recover quickly so one is the advantage of uh, uh, this is one of the advantage of uh, devops like in case of application breakdown so it will be possible to recover quickly and apart from that so what happens is like uh, one more thing is like uh, if you look at the other uh, advantage of uh, devops so the chance of getting an uh, chance of uh, the application getting uh, broken is very less so is very less so the reason for that is so like the, the projects in which uh, people follow a devops process what happens is like they will uh, they will like they will push a thoroughly tested code into production environment so they will push a thoroughly tested code 
into uh, into production environment so that's the reason what happens is like the chances of uh, the application uh, breakdown or uh, getting an issue is very very less so this is uh, one more issue and one more thing is like uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to these uh, application building what happens is in real time so there will be a lot of development teams uh, working together in order to implement the features of the, that particular app application so what happens like there won't be one single person uh, who will be building all of the requirements of that particular application or uh, like even there won't be one single team who will be uh, implementing all of those requirements so what happens is like there will be a lot of development teams uh, working on these uh, features that are required for this uh, application so what happens when a lot of development teams uh, works is like when we have a devops uh, process in place what happens is like it gives the developers an option uh, to see like uh, what are all the changes the other development teams are also making so it has uh, it has one advantage like uh, if developers are not aware of this what happens is like uh, there will be a chance of one development team overriding the changes uh, made by other uh, development team so when that happens what happens is like uh, it uh, unnecessarily what happens is like uh, it uh, takes some extra time so that happens when like uh, when we don't have a devops process in place when we have a uh, lot of development teams in place so like these are some of the advantages of uh, devops process like uh, when you take a project that uh, that is following the devops process and uh, if you consider a project which is not pro following a devops process like what happens is like uh, you will see these advantages so in the case of the project which are is uh, following the uh, devops process so like uh, apart from this like there will be lot of other advantages as well so but uh, i am not uh, telling you uh, those now because uh, even uh, if i tell you them now like uh, you will uh, get confused and uh, you won't understand them so for now like uh, like i'm i won't go into anything uh, technical now so what happens is like uh, i will uh, stop uh, my discussion here and uh, like uh, you can uh, like you can come up uh, on deciding uh, whether uh, to go with uh, devops or uh, administrative administration and uh, devops so based on that uh, what happens is like uh, we will uh, start the course accordingly so in the first session what happens is like uh, so like uh, based on the number of uh, count whichever we get so we will either start with uh, salesforce administration or directly with uh, salesforce devops concepts so i will stop my uh, discussion here if you have any questions you can ask me uh, otherwise uh, you can drop it hi uh, sir i have a question yeah. here yeah. uh yeah, here in the basic org we don't have uh, environments like how do we handle environments or you providing those things so in so basic uh, development work hmm. we have different environments like yes, so yes. How yes so when it comes to environment what happens with uh, salesforce platform is one thing is salesforce is a cloud uh, crm so cloud uh, platform so whenever we purchase uh, that particular uh, salesforce environment what happens is like uh, a account gets created so in that particular salesforce uh, account itself we will have an option to create the environments itself so like uh, di directly from the salesforce account we will uh, create the environment so what happens there here is like uh, you won't be uh, spinning up uh, servers like when it comes to environments setting up the environments in salesforce you won't uh, like uh, spin up uh, any servers what happens is like uh, we will be uh, setting up different different cloud instances so this feature we will have in the salesforce account itself so like uh, uh, like what happens is like whenever whenever a person uh, like uh, thinks of building an application on salesforce platform what happens is like he will buy uh, a salesforce uh, uh, like uh, platform account so in this particular account what happens is like uh, we will have an option to uh, create these environments as well so we will create the environments from there itself so we can create uh, any number of environments like uh, generally like what happens like based on the number of development teams we will create one environment for uh, each development team and for testing uh, we will provide uh, uh, one uh, environment and uh, likewise it will be possible for to create any number of environments the basic developer edition we can create right 
So that is developer edition. So developer edition is a free type of account offered by Salesforce. Uh, so like uh, just for uh, someone who want to uh, learn the futures of uh, Salesforce, we can make use of those developer edition accounts. In this uh, account, we create the um, environments or it is possible or not? So I in developer it's... edition, uh, like we, we can't create uh, environments uh, from developer edition uh, account. Uh, no, like we uh, like we won't. Uh, have... We attend uh, training. Or if we need some hands on, how we will perform? And so all you so guys what we will do provide... is yeah, yeah. So yeah. what we will do is like we will create multiple developer edition accounts. So we will create uh, multiple developer edition accounts, and we will uh, what we will do is like we will consider one as development environment, one as QA, and the other and, and the other one as UAT, and the other one as production. Okay. Yeah, so we can make use of those uh, developer edition accounts uh, for environment. So the only th like uh, what happens with these uh, developer edition type accounts is as these are the free accounts provided by Salesforce. What happens is like uh, we won't uh, get all of the features which a uh, premium Salesforce account has. But uh, even uh, uh, like if uh, even though it does not have all of the features, like uh, what happens like we will be able to learn most of the features. And when it comes to uh, like setting up these environments, so there is one uh, uh, one place like uh, there is one type of account uh, which is available. We can make use of that uh, that uh, particular account. So like uh, what happens is like uh, when we cover the concept of Copado, so like uh, there is something uh, provided by Copado tool uh, for people who want to uh, learn the futures of Copado. Tool. So like uh, what happens is like uh, in that future. Uh, in the or whichever Copado provides, so there we will have an option to create the environments as well. So we will see the environment creation part when we cover the concept of Copado as well. So one thing is like uh, like uh, in order to get hands-on uh, experience on uh, these concepts, like we have trial accounts or free accounts for each of the things whichever we are going to cover in this particular course. Like no need to worry about that. 